Should we get our first guest out, ladies and gentlemen? Yes! He is a young, good-looking television presenter. Although, you know, in the wrong light, he does pass for quite convincing Ian Duncan Smith double. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dermot O'Leary. Yeah, you see, you've got the uh, face on the T-shirt, and that means you've arrived. Mm -hmm. Loving that, boys. This is a very tall person's couch, isn't it? Look. If I um, sit back like this, suddenly... Look. <laughs> are you... Are you that's supposed to make me feel comfortable. You are quite... Uh, how tall are now you? Now you've got the upper hand already, look. Well, I'm not as short as, as, as everyone says I am. I'm five foot nine. Well, that's... that's Ish. Quite a reasonable height for an adult. Ten on a good day. Um, do you think there's any growing left to be done? I uh, very, very that? much doubt it. Um, were you short as a youngster? Obviously you were when you were first born, but I mean, you know... <laughs> did, you... <laughs> but did you feel shorter than everyone? About 13. You get yeah. to that horrible age when you're 13 and all the girls in your class are taller than you. And so I, I, I knew the sort of chips were stacked against me then, so I just... But you have a, you have a certain something, don't you, ladies and gentlemen? There's a certain... Yeah. Yeah. attractive Mumble! That was... It's a... <laughs> There's a certain Steve McQueen call about you. Oh, there's that's certain, nice. Yeah, there's a certain something about you. There's a little bit of, if you don't mind me saying, a little bit of early Michael Caine, maybe even a little bit of Steptoe, you know, the younger. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying, 70s kind of charisma. That's oh. it. <laughs> um, but things are going great for Dermot right now. You've got a show on BBC One. Yeah. Born um, to Win, Saturday nights. Born to Win, Saturday nights. It's like a knockout competition. Yeah, it? kind of. We, we took 20 young athletes, all of sort of different disciplines. So one's a boxer, one's a decathlete, and uh, uh, 10 boys, 10 girls. And we took them out to, to Austria and then through a series of events or whatever over three weeks, Colin Jackson, Sally Gunn are our mentors, they decide who goes home, so it's got a bit of a reality twist to it. But... Yeah, and so you're out there in Austria with a bunch of teenagers, mm. OK? Different sports, different disciplines. Now, how does that work that you get a boxer going up against someone who just runs fast? I mean, it's got to be kind of unfair, I would have thought. Yeah, it is. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> What we did was we, we picked, well, we sort of designed certain events, so, you know, we're testing them on endurance and focus and tactics and all these different things. Yeah. So if one person's good at one thing over a, sort of a period of an hour, or the show being an hour, if one, if one person's good at one thing, then someone else should be good at something else. So we sh it should level out. It evens out, then. It should do. And uh, are you excited about the farm? I mean, you presumably you know who's, it's live, who's won. live, so I'm happy. No, oh, no, it's, it's, it's live. live. Yeah. It's, I didn't realise that. It's live tomorrow night. We've pre-recorded two events. But you're going back to Austria for this? No, we're doing it in LWT. <laughs> but so what do you do then? This is like uh, Capricorn One, where it was meant to be on the moon, but it wasn't. It was in the studio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just, you just have a, a floor manager and lay the hose and walk past. We, and we spent far too much money in Austria, so yeah. Now we're getting the Bratwurst with a, boys back here. A flugel horn. Yes. Um, what was Austria like then? I've never been to Austria. Do so, you know? I've been there um, a couple of times. It's the first time I've been in the summer. Huh. It's beautiful, but. Only if you like sausage and cheese. Like sausage and cheese, best place in the world for you. If exactly. you don't like sausage and cheese, or any, any, or any food that solidifies in your stomach while you're eating it. So that's the Austrian okay. diet? Yeah, pretty okay. much. Did you like the Austrians? Were they nice people? Did they yeah. make you feel welcome? Lovely. Because I, I, I've got to be honest with you, my experience before now, was, uh, they've been quite rude to me. Which last mainly, time I, was like, I would have thought, like me, war films. Yeah. yeah. And skiing. Ski. Yeah, and <laughs> I do not like it when you cut them up. Yeah, I've never been skiing. All, un all be unintended. You look like a kind of um, tough guy. You look like an action-loving guy. I don't know whether you actually are. I don't know whether you're a rough person. I don't know whether you like to have a fist fight occasionally. Maybe you have a few drinks and you punch someone occasionally. I don't know that. <laughs> you might not want to admit that in public, but yeah. you do look like that, and I wonder whether, looking that way, whether that causes problems for you. I played American football, which is in itself poses more questions than answers. But I used to play American <laughs> football when I was little. Yeah. And because uh, I grew up in Essex and about two weeks ago my old team got back together. It was our like, 20th anniversary. Yeah. And we said come back and you know come back and play and you know and we'd do a bit of PR and we'll raise some money for charity. So I went back well, that's nice, played the game against a local university team who a couple of the boys um, play for. And I thought it'd be you know, friendly, it'd be a great laugh and yeah. you know it'd be wonderful playing playing again. Of course all they hear and they're you know, we, we think it's going to be a lovely friendly and so forth. Their team talk is, get the guy that's on television. Of Whatever it takes. Make what? sure he hurts. What so you I literally, and you've got pads on, so it, it shouldn't hurt. I've got to crack my rib. I've got a cut down there. And how they got through the padding with a knife, I don't know. But, they did. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Essex. <laughs> Um, now, let's talk about this SAS show. It was yeah. really a, It was such a kind of interesting idea. It was called SAS Are You Tough Enough? This was on BBC Two, what, about a year ago, was it? Yeah, February, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there have been two series. Are you going to do another one of those? They've commissioned two more. We've got one in... Um, in fact, I go out a week on Sunday to Namibia for about six weeks to do the next one, which is obviously desert uh, stuff. And then in the Arctic uh, in February, I think. The, the big one, I guess, was last series in Borneo, which is yeah. the one most people saw and we got nominated for a, a national TV award for, which is nice. Let's have a look. This is a clip. I think this is the clip of uh, the uh, series that took place in Borneo. This is uh, SS Are You Tough Enough? <laughs> 
I like the fact that some of them have camouflage on, but one guy, his camouflage was great. You couldn't see his face at all. It was like... It's very difficult to interview people, because the, when the SAS guys, they just shout at you in, mid, uh, in the middle of an interview. Like what? Well, you're trying to get an interview out of someone, and they ha say their hat's down like that, and you might uh, say, you know, so you're yeah. quite tentative, and you've got someone crying, because they just can't take it anymore. You go, Do you mind if you put your hat off? And the SAS guy will walk around and go, don't you take that effing hat off! And, think, and, I, and I'm like this guy. Hey, What's hey, wrong with them? Why are they so angry? There's a lot of frustration there. There's a lot of, there seems to be a lot of tension amongst the SAS. Yeah, I, I've got to go out there to Namibia a, a well, week on Sunday. I'm not saying anything. But do you... Uh, <laughs> they're uh, great guys, by the way. Would you be... Uh, could, you, could you do that? Would you be tough enough it's to do that? It's absolutely hideous. It doesn't it really, look that hard. It, I'll be no, honest with you. You know you're lying just, when you say I that. I think I could do that quite easily. <laughs> we we've tried to do one for comic relief. I'd have loved you to come it on It would have been easy. Be you know, it's, well, it's a few press-ups and then you run around in the water. It's probably quite a nice day out. <laughs> I mean, could you do it? Have you done it? Do you no. Do it? They, I mean, you, you try and do a little bit of it. It's, it is impossible. It's very difficult. Maybe it's impossible. It's very difficult, Jonathan. Well, why is it difficult? They've just... We saw them. Jonathan, a few press-ups, they said. ran through the mud, a bloke shouted at them. You shout, you shout all you want, I don't mind. There you go, I let's don't see need it. to show off, take, I know how to do it. Take it to the plane. I know. <laughs> I know this is your house, and I have the ultimate utmost respect for it. Well, you know, it's, it just looks a little bit... When you were working with the SAS, did any of them mention one of their former members who had managed to leave the service and had perhaps appeared on television? <laughs> with a slight speech impediment. <laughs> because if they're talking about me, I'm going to have to kill them. Really come to no. um, well, good luck out there. I'm looking forward to seeing the new series because it is an exciting show. Um, the, 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 when I first saw you and began to think, OK, this guy is, is going to be a, a real player on television, someone I think who's going to be around for a long while, was when I saw you doing Big Brother's Little Brother, which was the kind of spin-off show from Big Brother, which is on Channel 4, on E4. Now, this is something that I get the feeling you really enjoy doing. Yeah, it's my favourite show I do. And why, why no that? disrespect to any other show that I do, but, um, but I love it. Because it's live, it's every day, and you can put your own personality into it, and you can give it your own twist, and... Um, you know, I, I sort of give a weird Jerry Maguire-like mission statement speech to the production team before we start, and, um, and in that I include, them, I'm going to buy you lots of drinks, and then they start listening, and, um, and yeah, I, I, I genuinely love it, and it's weird, because I think Big Brother is such a divisive show, I think you either love it or you don't like it, but at the same time, I think it's, it's an everyman show, because I know it's very different now to the first series, I know... Yeah, well, the last series, I think, it, gen it's generally perceived by, I think, all and sundry, including people at Channel 4, as a bit of a failure, as a bit of a, a damp script, well, the last series of Big Brother itself. Viewing figures, it was fine, I think voting figures, it was down, but more, more, more importantly, they didn't have anyone on there who was oblivious, like Jade or, or Alex or... You want or someone Helen. who you really can either, you know, love or love, don't you, and you didn't really have that last Well, time. I think, to be honest with you, everyone says they were boring, but they're actually quite intelligent, the people that were on. Well, they weren't that intelligent were they? Well, I think when you look at it on paper... If they were, if they were that intelligent, what the f*** are they doing on Big Brother? <laughs> you know, to be honest with you. Well... You say that, but then when you leave and make a hundred grand doing promotions, then they ain't that tough. They ain't what's that this, dumb, what's this going on here? What are you doing well, now? This is some sort of a nervous tick you've got going on. I don't know whether you should be allowed back in the jungle with all this going on now. I think you need some sort of help, some sort of therapy before you go. <laughs> but, I mean, Team Big Brother was mental. We well, team, now, Team Big Brother, I, I, I have a bunch of you. Like, this is where you saw teenagers having sex. Yeah. That was, I, now, was that, do you think that was okay, that was acceptable to do that to those kids? <laughs> Who did what to the kids? Well, show it on television. Um, it's difficult, because at the end of the day, they're 18, and they're yeah. adults, and they made the decision to do that. And, and the thing was, Channel 4, in their heart of hearts, commissioned that show as an education show. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> Through education. Oh, Leary, come on! And if you, yeah, but if you look at it, if you think about it, they weren't allowed any alcohol, no. they weren't allowed any contraception. Yeah. They, stayed, they all stayed in the same room. Yeah. It's not particularly conducive to having sex. You put kids in a room together, even without alcohol and contraception, they will find a way of getting themselves dizzy by running around the circle, and then they'll use a crisp bag. <laughs> I've seen this sort of thing happen. Okay. I'm going to call what happens in your house. We know this happens. Uh, I've got nothing against teenage sex. Matter of fact, I'm all for it. It's just my <laughs> wife won't let me have any. But... <laughs> It just struck me as being a little bit crass, a little bit opportunistic of the channel to say, OK, we're doing this, this and then, well, here's something, and everyone's been saying we want to see sex on Big Brother. We've yeah, got some now, we've got it. Here we go, let's bung this out. I don't know, but to be fair, in actual fact, the producers were like this. Oh, my God, there were yeah. kids having if sex they were on really like show. That, They wouldn't have shown it. You can't go, yeah, but they can't go and stop them. Well, they don't have to show it. The weirdest thing was... To but be it honest, wasn't live, was it? The weird, no, the weirdest thing was... To well, then you don't have to show it. That's why we have editing suites. <laughs> but that's why we have, you know, freedom. That's why we say, that's not freedom. You can't, you, you can't like, make a case for freedom by saying, yeah, we showed a couple of kids 
shagging in a sleeping bag on TV. I know they knew, but... They knew exactly what they were doing. They weren't idiots. I like this body language here. This is... You, you studied this, I can tell. You're saying, I'll move him, make contact, and win him over with my close friend. <laughs> <laughs> in a minute, he's going to touch my mother. But you know, you know we're, we're not unintelligent people. I don't, I don't see a problem with it. Well, I, I don't see a major problem. I just thought Channel 4, it struck me that they're trying to well, kickstart... Stop start. beating up on me about it, then. Well, it's not your fault. I'm just saying, let's, let's join hands and say those people are wrong. No. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Uh, this is a clip from uh, Big Brother's Little Brother because it does. I think there's a certain joie de vivre you brought to that show. There was a certain liveliness, a certain love of the medium, which was is quite rare these days in television. And I think you exhibited it through the joy of dance. <laughs> it's a fun show. I must. Be, I, I think I enjoyed that much more than Big Brother itself. I love doing live TV. And they're doing and another another Big Brother, and you're doing another Little Brother's Big Brother. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, they haven't asked me to yet, but I hope so. Uh, Dermot, thank you for coming on the show, and I watch all your shows with great interest. I think you're a real talent. Dermot O'Leary, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. Well done. Well, you've got now. You can go now. And you've got a job well done. Look at the swagger there. Look, he's happy with that.